Now that you are well acquainted with what actually respiration is, let us see in detail the mechanism of respiration, the points that we had discussed that it involves glycolysis, Krebs cycle and fermentation if oxygen is not available. We are going to see each step in detail. So first of all, I need you to know that if a respiratory material that is the substrate which happens to be sucrose that is to be broken down, what would happen inside a cell? We are talking about cellular respiration over here. Supposedly, this is the the cell, the respiratory substrate, consider it to be glucose, it would enter the cell and undergo the process of glycolysis, which every respiratory substrate has to undergo, irrespective of it whether it is having oxygen or not. After this glycolysis, if the oxygen is available, supposedly, if the oxygen is available, this glycolysis process would have given rise to two molecules of pyruvic acid. We will consider what these are. But this glycolysis, the substrate which would be obtained after glycolysis, it would move to mitochondria. We have discussed what this organelle is meant for the mitochondria. Just excuse the weird drawing that is over here. It is just to make you understand that after glycolysis, the substrate whichsoever is formed has to enter the mitochondria if the oxygen is provided and it would undergo Krebs cycle, which is otherwise known as tricarboxylic acid cycle, TCA cycle. This thing happens in mitochondria and supposedly oxygen is absent. There is least availability of oxygen. Then this substrate formed after glycolysis would enter the process of fermentation, which could be alcoholic or the lactic acid fermentation. So now let us consider the process of glycolysis, which is universal to all the cells. Every cell, if I'm talking about bacterial cell, glycolysis would take place. If it's a plant cell, fungal cell, the process of glycolysis has to take place. So let us see what it is all about. First of all, you need to remember a few things. Uh, you need to remember the name, the scientists which are involved who discovered this pathway in the living cells. Secondly, you need to remember each and every product which is formed after every step. And most importantly, you need to remember the enzymes which are involved in this enzymatic activity because the breakdown of glucose can be termed as combustion as well but this becomes glycolysis and living process only if enzymes are involved so we'll have a quick review of whatever happens in glucose uh, glycolysis before that we need to know that there were three scientists who were independently involved in discovering this pathway of glucose breakdown Ebden, Merov and Parnas that's why it is known as EMP pathway and this is the first stage of breakdown of glucose where we start from glucose Please pay attention, which is a six carbon molecule, the glucose, it begins with glucose, it has to undergo certain steps and we are going to obtain pyruvic acid, two molecules of pyruvic acid, why? Because pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound. I'm repeating it again. The glucose is a six carbon compound that is uh, obvious from your knowledge of chemistry. It is a six carbon compound. By the end of this process where different enzymes would be involved, we need to obtain two three carbon pyruvic acid molecules. All right. So what happens over here? First of all, the cell is provided with the food material, which is sucrose. By the activity of invertase enzymes, it is converted to glucose. Now, this glucose and sucrose both are, you know, both are six carbon. So, basically, an inversion process takes place in the uh, in the in the presence of this enzyme and it is converted to glucose. Once it has become glucose, what happens now? First of all, you need to remember the enzyme hexokinase. In the presence of hexokinase, two steps are going to take place where the glucose would become glucose 6-phosphate. All right. Over here, as it is becoming 6-phosphate, you know, glucose is a 6-carbon compound. There would be a chain of 6 carbons. At the 6th carbon, 1-phosphate from this ATP, which breaks down, and this ATP would break down to ADP. It would lose its phosphate, which would come and join on this glucose at the 6th position, and it would form glucose 6-phosphate, which again is a 6-carbon compound. Now, this takes place in presence of enzyme hexokinase. Now, second step is that this glucose 6-phosphate 
converts itself into its isomer that is fructose 6-phosphate. Why this conversion takes place? In the presence of hexokinase again, why this conversion takes place? There is a reason behind it so that at the in the presence of glucose, when it is glucose in isomeric form, there could be addition of single phosphate. But when it becomes fructose 6-phosphate, it is easier for addition of another phosphate at the first position by use of ATP which breaks down into ADP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate and ADP is diphosphate. So the one phosphate that is lost that comes and joins at the first position. Now please pay attention these four steps are similar to the inverse what happens in the C3 cycle. If you don't remember, just pay attention that glucose has to add two phosphates, first and sixth position, which is possible only if it gets converted to fructose. And the enzyme which is responsible for bringing about this change so that fructose 1,6-phosphate is obtained is the hexokinase. And there is breakdown of two ATP molecules giving rise to two ADP molecules. Now what happens next is this fructose has to undergo a breakdown. You know, it's a six carbon chain. There are two phosphates which are added and something like this would happen. And the fructose 1, 6 phosphate would break down. It is fructose 1, 6 biphosphate. Not just phosphate, it is bisphosphate or biphosphate you need to remember because there are two phosphates which are involved. So it's like there is a stereochemical change. It breaks down with the agency of this enzyme which is phosphofructokinase. Because the phosphates are present, phosphofructo, fructose is present, kinase, breakdown. Okay, so the first thing that you remember is hexokinase that is going to add the phosphates to glucose. Next is phosphofructokinase that in the presence of two phosphates, the fructose molecule is going to be broken down into two triose phosphates. Alright, when I say triose phosphates, now here entire scene changes. From the six carbon compound, now you have two carbon compounds which are three carbon each. Alright, also pay attention that both the triose phosphates that I have written over here, we'll consider what they are. They are interconvertible. All right. Now, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, it breaks down to two molecules of triose phosphates, which have to become this form that is 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde. All right. When this bisphosphate breaks into two molecules, three carbons and three carbons, we get two molecules. It could be dihydroxyacetone phosphate. For remembering purpose, you can remember it DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And this could be remembered as PGAL, that is phosphoglyceraldehyde. Whenever this, these two molecules are broken down, there is a chance of energy conserving step where the NAD positive is reduced to NADH. Now here is where the energy is getting stored. Over here we talk about that whenever the energy uh, is to be released, it is to be released in the form of ATP. But instead of releasing it, we have used it till now. And over here when I say the word NADH, please remember one NADH molecule is equivalent to three ATPs. So we are somehow getting the energy we will get to know that how this NADH is going to give rise to ATPs. But for once, energy conserving step takes place when the 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde get converted to a uh, um, carbonic acid, carboxylic acid, not uh, carbonic acid, I beg your pardon for that. The phosphoglyceraldehyde, that is a triose phosphate, it has to get converted to a carboxylic acid, which is 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid. And in this entire process, NAD positive would get reduced to NADH. So we get one molecule of NADH. Don't forget, entire process which we are going to study after this is done in two simultaneous places because one of the molecules of DHAP would again get converted to 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde and it would undergo the same fate that we are studying now. All right, so when I say, if I can put it, two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid, it would be justified enough because that DHAP, these two molecules are going to see the same fate. That's why we are going to get two pyruvic acid molecules in the end. For once, I'm rubbing this too so that you understand it from one point of view where we are considering single molecule of 3-PGAL. 
Okay, now once this carboxylic acid is being formed, it is easier for 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid to lose one of the phosphates and lead to the formation of ATP. Now we are somehow arriving to the process which actually says that there is generation of ATP. Till now we were seeing that ATP were rather used instead of getting generated. So this process of 1,3-boyphosphoglyceric acid giving rise to ATP is somehow catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. Now it is the breakdown that the phosphate would get separated and it would get added in the form of inorganic phosphate to the molecule of ADP which would give rise to ATP. I hope till now I am clear. If I am not, I am going to repeat it. But for once you need to know that one was the energy generating step. Ne next step which has followed, it has given rise to another ATP. Then comes 3-phosphoglyceric acid which gets converted to 3-phosphoglycerate. And as soon as 3-phosphoglycerate is formed, it is easier for 3-phosphoglycerate to lose one of its water molecule and get converted to by into PEP that is phosphoenol pyruvate in two simultaneous steps where it loses the water molecules. Now when this PEP is formed the activity of enzyme pyruvate kinase enables the loss of another phosphate from PEP and another ATP molecule is formed. Again I am repeating it from here, 1,3-biphosphoglyceric acid was the carboxylic acid which enabled the giving up of one phosphate so that ATP is formed. Then comes 3,5-biphosphoglyceric acid which would get converted to phosphoenol pyruvate by a series of steps which involves removal of two water molecules and when the PEP that is phosphoenol pyruvate is formed, it is easier for the molecule in the presence of enzyme pyruvate kinase to lose one of its phosphate and form pyruvic acid. Now one of the pyruvic acids is obtained in the similar fashion this particular triose phosphate would undergo same steps and we are going to obtain two molecules of pyruvic acid in the end of the process. Alright so I am going to repeat it another time. In a nutshell, what we have to see that glucose gets converted to pyruvic acid. It is a 10 step process where we used two ATP molecules and in return four ATP molecules were generated. How I am saying four? Because each of these are going to be two over here, two. Why two? Because these are interconvertible forms. Each form would undergo similar fate. So in the end we have two pyruvic acid molecules. I hope I am clear enough that we had used two molecules of ATP and in return we got two molecules of NADH because again that thing would come into this pathway only. See this particular point you need not to miss, you need to understand it clearly that the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate got converted to 3-PGAL okay one molecule that was 3 carbon the remaining 3 carbon was DHAP which would again get converted to 3 PGAL and 3 PGAL would form one pyruvic acid this would also form one pyruvic acid in the similar fashion as this is formed and what you need to remember which is a little bit difficult are the four enzymes which are involved there are the steps which involve hexokinase that is the addition of phosphate to the fructose then there is phosphofructokinase when the fructose is to be broken down then we need phosphofructokinase kinase word would be wherever there is breakdown required then there is there are two three more kinases in fact there are three kinases and two more kinases which are to become uh, which are to be dealt with phosphoglycerate kinase wherever you are getting phosphoglycerate. So this would be the step which would involve phosphoglycerate kinase and last one is pyruvate kinase it would be in the case of PEP. So we are going to use these kinases wherever there is generation of ATP and this one suggests a simple name that it would come wherever there is talking of phosphate, uh, fructose, not phosphate, wherever we are talking about fructose. So in this way, we come to the point where we arrive with two pyruvic acids in the cell. Now these pyruvic acids are ready to enter the Krebs cycle or alcoholic fermentation depending on the availability of oxygen inside the cell and that would decide the ultimate formation of ATPs. Do remember the outcome that is two molecules of ATP 
in each pyruvic acid. So totally we have four molecules of ATP, though two have been used, so the total outcome would be two only, four subtracting two out of four, so we get two molecules of ATP and at the same time we get two molecules of NADH. Thank you.